Hello everyone, my name is Blaine Pearson and I'm a graduate instructor in Texas Tech's Personal Financial Planning Program. In this video, we're going to look at what is a financial planning balance sheet. To begin, let's take a look at what the other terms used to describe a balance sheet are. You may hear a balance sheet referred to as a statement of net worth or a net worth statement. You may also hear it referred to as a statement of financial uh, position. No matter which term you elect to use, all a balance sheet does is focus on a point in time for the clients. It examines a multitude of things, such as, first, their assets. So a balance sheet first starts out by gathering all the assets and organizing them according to their categorical names and everything on the balance sheet is stated at fair market value. So you may hear a quiz question or something that says, is it you know, stated at what the individual paid for or what the retail price is, if they think they can sell it for a certain dollar amount, it's always gonna be fair market value. From there, we have our liabilities. Liabilities are, in a sense, the things that we owe, our debt obligations. Anything that's due within 12 months is considered a short-term liability, and anything that's due longer than 12 months is considered a long-term liability. And liabilities are always stated as the principal amount that's outstanding, or the balance. So if you have a mortgage, for example, on your home, you would report your liability as the remaining principal balance due on that mortgage. You would not put what you originally had the mortgage for or anything like that. It would always be the principal outstanding. From there, we take our assets, subtract our liabilities, and what's left is our net worth. That's the difference between our assets and our liabilities. If we have a positive net worth, which we hope we do, this means our assets will be greater than our liabilities. If we have a negative net worth, that means liabilities, the amount we owe, will be greater than what we own. You may also hear that situation where what you owe is greater than what you own as being underwater. From a corporate finance perspective, net worth is dubbed as equity. And so you can think of it the same way. How much equity do you have in what you own? And balances are always stated as a specific day. So the balance sheet as of June 1st, as of August 1st, and this is because balance sheets are always, always, always changing. You're always paying down principal on your mortgage. Your investable assets are always fluctuating in value, etc. So let's get into looking at the basic asset categories. So first is our cash and our cash equivalents. This is anything that's in your checking account, any cash on hand, even cash in your wallet, if you want to include that, money market funds, etc and anything that's also expected to convert to cash within 12 months is also considered an asset now or is a, a cash asset now what an investable asset is or an investment assets are assets that you have that are invested in a stock or in a business or something of that nature and we normally think of these as our long-term assets that we have to achieve our client goals so stocks bonds mutual funds retirement accounts etc our personal use assets are things like furniture, maybe a motorcycle, clothing, things to that effect. Usually personal assets are not things that we consider instrumental in uh, our planning outcomes. Most clients may find it difficult if you, as one of your recommendations, say, oh, go sell some of your clothing or, oh, go sell you know, grandma's furniture. Typically, the most emotional assets are personal use assets and those are typically ones we want to stay away from and making recommendations right and, and making changes from now granted if it's a, a car that they can't afford or something like that that's a little different but typically a a personal use asset is kept by the client because the cash that they can get for that asset is not worth what the client has value for on that asset now these assets are used to maintain clients lifestyle etc so, so a few additional asset categories that you may want to consider adding to the balance sheet, retirement assets, real estate assets, business at, businesses that the client may own. So these are categories where 
if the client may consider or you may consider his real estate or her real estate assets separate than the investable assets or even the business assets, you may want to individually categorize those. So for example, real estate, you may have several investment properties and you can list those out on your balance sheet as well. I have an example of a balance sheet that I constructed for some clients here. And as we talked about in the first part of this video, we first take all of our assets, our cash, our investable assets, personal use assets. And in this case, if we look at all of the client's cash assets, they have around 224000 in cash and cash equivalents. And again, those are things like the checking account that we talked about, the money market fund, etc. Our investable assets here, we decided to lump the investable assets along with your retirement assets. Because there is only one investable account here, and one educational account, we just decided that it made sense for the client uh, for simplicity purposes to just have this listed as one category. Now granted, if the client had several investable assets and it made sense to then have its own category separate from retirement assets, same thing with education assets, you can certainly do that. What you want to try to avoid is having a ton of these individual assets. You can you know, almost asset out anything, right? You say all the IRAs, then all of Monica's IRAs, et cetera. So we want to be cognizant of the fact that our clients really want to see it just a simple summation. And the more that we can help do that, the better. Our personal use assets here, jewelry, we have a, a gun collection, some home furnishings, et cetera, and, and the values there. So we sub all three of these. And this gives us our total assets. Now this is not necessarily how much the client is worth, right? Because they're somewhat leveraged with liabilities. Here they have some outstanding credit card debts, some short-term loans on uh, auto loans and track car loans, etc., as well as some long-term liabilities. We see that the principal amount of the mortgage is included. The long-term part of the auto loan is included here. If you remember from the first part of the video, anything due within 12 months, is a short-term debt. Anything due longer than 12 months is a long-term debt, so that's why we have these two separated. From here, we take the summation of all of that and all that they owe, both current and long-term, and that gives us our total long-term liabilities. So if we want to figure out, okay, how much are these clients worth, we take the total assets, the 2.3, minus the 205,000 in total liabilities, and that gives us the total net worth of the clients. Again, this is Blaine Pearson, and in this video, we covered what is a financial planning balance sheet. Thank you for watching.